Hi, I'm your host, Larissa Worstiak. Through this podcast, I aim to empower and inspire jewelry entrepreneurs and professionals so they can thrive while adding more beauty to the world. I'm passionate about digital marketing for jewelry brands, and I'm excited to share my passion with you. As we all know, jewelry is joy, so I'll gladly seize any opportunity to talk about it. This is episode 159, and today I want to share 10 outdated social media marketing tips because the world of social media is constantly evolving. And if you don't have someone like me in your corner day in and day out, it can be very hard to keep up with all the changes. Who the heck wants to be spending time reading news about Instagram and TikTok? I don't know very many people who do. So listen to this episode and find out how you can get out out with the old and start being more current with all your social media marketing. You'll be one step ahead of your competitors and you'll look very savvy to your customers. You'll also make sure you're adhering to best practices so the algorithm likes you the most. But before we get to the solid gold of this episode, I'd like to take a moment to remind you that this podcast has both an audio and video component, in case you didn't know. So you can either listen on your favorite podcast platform or watch on YouTube by searching Joy Joya. I love creating this content as my act of service to you, my awesome listeners, and you can support the podcast for free by taking the time not only to subscribe, but also to leave a rating and review on iTunes, which helps other jewelry dreamers find it too. Let's discuss some recent news related to jewelry or marketing. Each week, I share my thoughts about three relevant articles, and you can get those links by visiting joyjoya.com slash sign up. Once you're on that VIP list, you'll receive our weekly digest filled with new episode announcements. The first article is from socialmediatoday.com, and it's all about how men are using Pinterest. Yes, men are using Pinterest. And I think this is important because they do purchase jewelry, not only for their partners, but also more increasingly for themselves. In 2021, 36% of men self-identified as self-purchasers of all types of fine jewelry, according to recent data from the MVI. In fact, the report shows that all age groups from 25 to 55 embrace the idea of buying fine jewelry for themselves, with the most enthusiastic group being ages 25 to 35. And guess what? How is this related to Pinterest? Well, 32% of Pinterest users are 18 to 29 years old. Here's a quote from the article. Pinterest has published new insights into male pinner usage and how men vary in their use of the app versus other users in order to help marketers better plan and strategize their male pinner outreach, end quote. So this study from Pinterest showed a mix of big picture intention setting and smaller shifts to have more fun in the year ahead. Here are their findings or one finding on how men are looking to achieve these goals. 75% of male pinners are looking to spend more money to reach their goals in 2022. That makes me think they want things that feel aspirational and inspirational for them. And you can definitely provide that as a jewelry brand. Pinterest also highlights these key tips to consider if you're looking to connect with male pinners on their pin shopping journey. One, these pinners are highly brand conscious and they will pay more for the brands they know and trust. Two, men conduct fewer searches before making a purchase, so they're keen to get to the point faster in the process, underlining the need to reach them early in their shopping journey. And three, given this, Pinterest personalization in its search results is a key benefit for male pinners, with 85% of male users noting that the platform feels personalized to them. Next is an article from InStore Mag all about data sharing between suppliers and retailers and why transparency is becoming increasingly important. So, hey, transparency matters in the jewelry industry in case you haven't heard not only for the customer brand relationship, 
but also in the B2B relationship between retailers and suppliers. The jewelry marketplace is experiencing a rapid and fundamental shift in B2B dynamics. Less than a decade ago, it was normal for retailers to resist sharing data with their suppliers. But today, can you even imagine that, like being stingy with your data? Today, we're seeing brands and retailers alike embracing data sharing within their business relationships and insisting on collaborative interactions. So these collaborative interactions between retailers, suppliers, and sales reps are a must for today's sales environment, and the desire for transparency and partnership will only continue to grow. And then our last article today also comes from In-Store Mag. It's all about how to wow clients at your next in-store event. Are you planning to have an in-store event anytime soon, whether that's an event in your own store or a trunk show or a pop-up? Eventually, COVID's got to give, right? I hope. Well, these three tips are key to running a successful in-store event. One, timing and exclusivity are key. So you want to be planning events based on your store's biggest shopping seasons. Overdoing the number of events you hold in a year will cause the events to lose their allure and potential customers will view your store as gimmicky. The more exclusive you can make an event, the more hype and hopefully more profit. Focus on hosting or creating a few really outstanding events rather than a bunch of small, mediocre ones. Tip number two, choose the right vendor or vendors. So if you are a retailer and you have your own retail store, that might mean inviting a quote up and coming brand or lines that you might not carry, but your customers come in asking about. This will give give you a chance to get real customer feedback and maybe test the market to see if this brand is one that you would want to carry in your store. And if you don't have your own store, if you are an independent brand and you're hosting an event like a trunk show or pop-up on behalf of your brand, consider inviting local vendors outside of the jewelry who can mutually benefit. So maybe like a housewares brand or a clothing brand, like someone to do a brand partnership with in with for your event. And then number three, make sure you're following up with clients. Not everyone will purchase during your event, of course, but it's a good idea to follow up with all of those who attended, including the vendors, because they're prime targets for further marketing efforts. As I mentioned, if you want to get the links to the articles I share in this segment of the podcast, you can become a Joy Joya VIP by visiting joyjoya.com slash sign up. So let's talk about social media marketing. What are 10 outdated social media marketing tips that you really, really need to drop in 2022 or ignore or do something totally different? Get ahead of the curve, be up to date, start wowing the algorithm and your customers with your savvy social media marketing knowledge. How should you be replacing these things with relevant habits? I want to tell you right now. So number one, the tip that um, needs to go is being obsessed with aesthetics in your Instagram feed. That is out. Let's get it out. Of course, you want your Instagram grid to be representative of your brand overall. So if someone comes to visit your profile They want to kind of get a whole feel or a vibe. But I think in 2022 and beyond, that's less about making it look so pretty and visually appealing and more about how it's representing a story or building an entire story about your brand. Of course, you don't want it to look ugly. You don't want someone to come to your profile and think, oh my gosh, what is happening here? But I think the focus on the quote unquote prettiness is less important than really telling a whole cohesive story and being super engaging with your content so that your customer can get a feel for your brand just by visiting your profile. Number two, auto share your content from Instagram to Facebook. That is out. I can't even tell you how many brands I talk to that are doing this because 
they're just so focused on their Instagram feed that they don't have time to think about other social media platforms like Facebook or Pinterest and how they are engaging with the audiences there. I think it's a huge missed opportunity when you're auto sharing content from Instagram to Facebook. One, as we all know, you cannot put links in Instagram captions. So if you are auto sharing from Instagram to Facebook, the biggest missed opportunity is that you are not posting a link in your Facebook caption. Also, it's very likely that the audiences on Instagram and Facebook are slightly different. So you can tailor the content to appeal to both. And even if they are kind of the same audiences on both, there's a chance that someone is not seeing the same content on Instagram as they are on Facebook because of the way the algorithm is delivering content to them. So that is out. You need to post separately to all your social media platforms and tailor your content for each one. Outdated tip number three, find the top influencers for your brand and hire them. That is out. You are not going to get a great return on investment by just going on Google and saying like, who are the top influencers right now? I want to hire XXX or going through like some kind of influencer marketing tool that shows you like who's the most popular in your field. Those are outdated tips. You need to focus on finding influencers who are truly right for your brand. So they need to represent your target customer. They need to be actually interested in your brand and your product and not just be chasing a paycheck because many of them are. They need to be interested in potentially having a long-term relationship with you. So there's a lot to consider. Having an effective influencer partnership is definitely more involved than just going on Google and, and searching for like the top influencers to target. One thing you can consider instead of like a traditional influencer relationship is focusing on a kind of new feature on Instagram, which is Instagram collabs. So that allows you to tap into new audiences because you have the chance to co-create or co-author a feed post or reel with another Instagram user. And those are a really unique new way to approach influencer partnerships. So it's something to look into this year and beyond. Number four outdated tip, be focused on your follower count and other vanity metrics. You've probably heard me say vanity metrics before on this podcast. That just refers to numbers that maybe make you feel good about what you're doing, but don't necessarily have any real impact on your return on investment or your sales. That is out. We all know that it's really difficult to grow an organic following on social media platforms. But hopefully, if you have been focused on social media marketing, the, fol the following that you do have is an engaged and qualified one. So it's more important to focus on things like engagement. How can you really get your current follower base to really be true fans of your brand instead of focusing on these more vanity metrics like getting more followers. Number five outdated tips. Modify your image or voice on social media based on a trend or based on what everyone else is doing. I swear there was a period of time when like majority was super up and coming and every jewelry brand that was a startup wanted to be like majority. And I felt like jewelry Instagram was like all beige for a minute and it had all the same look, the same aesthetic. It also felt for a certain period of time, like there was a caption trend in the jewelry industry where everyone was just posting like one vague word and then like an emoji for every single caption on Instagram. <laughs> Those are out. Let's focus on figuring out what's really right for your brand and confidently stepping into that look and that voice instead of trying to be what everyone else is trying to be. Number six, outdated trend, boosting or promoting posts. I've said this before on the podcast, 
advertising on social media really needs to be done in a strategic and holistic way. So considering like all the parts of the whole, putting money behind a post on a whim isn't because uh, you want to feel better about it or feel like you are doing something productive is not going to achieve anything. That is out. Number seven, on social media, just showing your products over and over, being super focused on product features and benefits. Instead, you, you of course, you want to still show your products, but you want to be more focused on the lifestyle that goes with your jewelry brand, the story behind your jewelry products. Figure out a way to also incorporate that instead of just kind of spamming people with product photos all the time. Number eight, outdated tip or practice. Rely too much on Instagram and Facebook shopping tools. So the in-app checkout or the in-app um, like product details and pricing to hope that your customers will buy on social media and that that's kind of the quick fix that you need for e-commerce. That is out Yes, those things are great tools. They can help provide product information for customers who just want to know like a price or details, or they are in the consideration phase of the buyer's journey. But instead, you really want to look for ways to encourage your users to go to your website or store. So that means mentioning in the caption to click the link in bio to go to your e-commerce shop. Because if your e-commerce shop is well-optimized, has a great user experience, and that person goes to your site, they're going to have fun. They're going to be engaged. They might sign up for your email marketing list. So it's really important to, as best as you can, kind of shake shake them off the app, the app like Instagram and Facebook, and get them onto your store to start browsing and really getting more familiar with your brand. Number nine outdated tip being a part of an engagement pod. That's out. I don't know if you've ever heard of engagement pods. Maybe you have been part of one at some point, but it's a group of people that they share their posts within a, a DM group so that everyone in that group can like, comment, and share on each other's new posts when they're posted. And the thought around this was that they're kind of helping each other mutually boost their engagement. I think this was something influencers were doing for, for a little bit. It's like they think it's a way to trick the algorithm. But here's the thing why this is bad and why you should not do it. You're going to be spending way too much time and energy engaging not with your customers, not with your target audience, and being so worried about this like vanity thing instead of doing the thing that's actually going to help you connect with your audience. And the other thing is they can actually hurt the algorithm because then the algorithm starts to think you like only a certain type of content and it's just a mess. Please don't do engagement pods. And then number 10, post every day. That is out. Of course, if you can post every day, that's awesome. If you can do it, that's great. I admire you. It will definitely help you in the long run. The algorithm will like you if you're posting frequently. But if you are stressed out because you're posting every day, if you like can't come up with quality content on a daily basis, then it's definitely better to do whatever you can do, of course. Those are my, my outdated tips that I need you to stop doing in 2022 and beyond. What did you think? You can always email me, Larissa. That's L-A-R-Y-S-S-A -S -S at joyjoya.com. If you love this podcast, please share it with a friend who'd appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe as well as leave a review on iTunes. To purchase a signed copy of my book, Jewelry Marketing Joy, visit joyjoya.com book for more information.